Hi everybody, welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. Today I wanted to talk about a very specific type of art, to art called Fracture, which is a Pennsylvania Dutch style of illuminated manuscript. The classic illuminated manuscript was done by monks, like hundreds, even up to thousands of years ago, where they would write out something like a Bible, and along it they would put these beautiful and intricate patterns. They basically brought to life the, the words that were on the pages. Kind of like a picture book, but like an original style and it was all hand done and very, very beautiful. The Pennsylvania Dutch colonies did a very similar thing where they would get a hex pattern, which is kind of like a, just a regular circle, and they would divide it and use a repeating pattern to just create these beautiful, vibrant, wonderful colors. They did their own form um, called fractor, or um, where they would take some documents that were very important to them, things like birth certificates or um, certificates of marriage, things that they would want to hang on the wall and, and decorate, and they would put their own beautiful patterning on them. They did this um, for, for a couple hundred years, you'll still see if you go to the Pennsylvania Dutch area that there's a lot of these beautiful um, tulips and these hex patterns everywhere. And this um, type of illuminated manuscript is still available, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. It looks kind of, kind of like this. Well, I got into this through a weird little rabbit hole. If you know anything about art or you've studied it, you can kind of pick up something and then there's just so much more that goes into it. Say that you wanted to learn calligraphy and then all of a sudden then you have pens and nibs and inks and all this type of stuff. I wanted to draw a flower that I really liked. I got this little perfume box and in it there was this really cool pattern. I don't know if you can see it. But there are these beautiful little geometric flowers, and I thought that they were so pretty that I wanted to paint them. So I did. So the first thing I did was I did this painting. And you can see it's a little different than something you might have done before because it's very structured. So first of all, I measured out all of these lines, and then we I created these hoops using my compass to make sure that everything was even and each of the lines was even. I then used a ruler and I sketched out and measured out each of the flower petals so that they were all exactly the same. So like I said, this is going to be a little bit different than something you've done before. You might have seen something kind of similar, something like this, but it's going to be a little bit looser. This, this type of style is very, very tight, very together and very repetitive. So you're getting a lot of that beauty out of the repeating pattern. So the next one that I did was this. And you can see it was very similar, but I just added more petals in and then just did just a few leaves. So from there I started to look into this style. And this, you can see I did a flower inside a flower inside a circle. And then I was experimenting with this vining pattern that came out. So this one has a little bit of the freestyle, like these leaves aren't exactly matching. But this is all very, very measured out. So this Frankfurter style that they did, not only was it these beautiful flowers and leaves and natural things, they did a lot of birds. But a key part of this Frankfurter style is that there was a repetition. So they would take one pattern and then repeat it, but reverse it like a mirror image. So this one, put a mirror up here, and then you could have it that way. So this, this one I, I worked on and I measured it all out, made sure that everything was exactly the same, and then did my very, very best to replicate it so I'd have the same soup for the bird, have the same soup for the heart. So this is what I wanted you guys to do today, this Frankfurt pattern. So. You can do it one of two ways. The first way, you could do something like this flower or the leaves. So to do this, what you're going to do is you're going to take your sketchbook and a ruler. 
and you need to be very, very precise. I'm going to draw, and then I can draw right down the middle. Let's see, I'm going to go, let's see, I am 16 centimeters down. You can do inches. I like to do centimeters because I was raised in England, and it is what it is. So half of 16 is 8. So 8 centimeters through. And then I'm going to draw a line in between the two. So I'm getting an exact pattern. I don't know if you can see it. Pencil is a little hard to, to show up on these videos. But from here you can see that I have this, this structure. So I can just go through and I can add petals in if I'd like. And it's okay too. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect the first time. If you notice that something's a little bit off, that's the joy of pencil. Remember, the pencil comes with an eraser. So if it looks off, just erase it and, and do it again. So keep sketching. Remember to sketch gently. So sketch lightly so that you can go over it and erase it and go again. If you go really, really hard and you try to erase it, you throw your pencil down. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's a lot harder to erase if you've been going hard. So go very, very gently and sketch until you have something that looks, looks right, looks like it's the same on both sides. And then from here you can add in those leaves. So you can see there's my basic, basic sketch. Of course, if you have a compass and you'd like to play with it, absolutely do. Set it up, you know, you put your pencil in, here's the sharp end. Put your pencil in, she says, put your pencil in, make sure that when it's together, the tip of your pencil and the tip of the pointy thing absolutely match and you lock it down. And then go like this, spread it out, you put your tip down. and then you can just draw your circles right on. The joy about this is if it's tight, then you will have the same angle every single time you draw it. Sometimes they slip, so you gotta, gotta keep your eye on it. So this is the first way that you could experiment with this, is trying to draw one of these symmetrical flowers or leaves. The other thing that you could do is try this mirroring technique. So this one's going to be a little bit more difficult, but what you're going to do is you're going to take your paper and divide it exactly in half. So let's see, my paper is 30 centimeters long. I'll grab another pencil. Mm, that doesn't seem to want to open, so let's use this one. 30 centimeters, 30 divided by 2 is 15. I like to measure in more than one place so that you know that your ruler is lined up properly. Just like that, and draw through. So this is exactly half of my paper. So let's see, exactly half of that again. So half of 15 is 7.5. So, 7.5. And then I'm gonna do something I don't know. Let's let's try just a really quick heart. Just for an example, you could try a bird. You could try anything you want, really. The Frankfurt um, usually kind of concentrated on natural things like birds or um, cats, dogs. I don't know something fun. So I'm just gonna draw a really simple heart. Tulips. Lots and lots of tulips. Forgot about tulips. And then all we're going to do is just try to make sure that they're exactly the same. And from here, you can just add more. Say, hey, I want a leaf coming out of the top of it. 
So remember that whatever you do to one side, you also need to do to the other side. So it's that repeating pattern. So there you go. I don't know if you can see this, but there's two hearts, there's a leaf coming out of it. So whatever you do, the same, and if you mirror it. So say you have two birds. One is going to face one way and the other one will face the opposite way. So it looks like they're mirrored. Like you're looking into a mirror. Alright. So just for the sake of it, I'm going to show you a quick tulip too. So tulips are this kind of swooping pattern down. I'll draw it darker if I can. Swoop down. Just because Pennsylvania Dutch love their tulips. I think it's because... Um, in the Netherlands, they grow lots and lots and lots of tulips. It's really beautiful. Okay, so draw a basic tulip, and then you can do something like, like a point in the middle. So if you wanted to do a tulip, this is the basic pattern for a tulip. You've got the swoop, you've got a swoop, a swoop, and then something in the middle so it looks like a flower. And then from here, after you've drawn it out, then just paint it. Any way you'd like with your watercolors, remember to let your watercolors, if you're using a pan, let the color sit so that you're going to get that nice, vibrant color. I cannot wait to see what you guys do, and thank you for joining me today. I will see you later. Bye, guys.